Sitting alone, the journey of life. Sizzling monsoon danced at me. Cool was the rain, fresh from above. I saw her, sitting by the window side, enjoying the grazing cows, the enchanting clouds, the drumbeats of thunder. She sang a silent song. हमने दिल्ली में दिखाया था एफएनएसी कराया बायोपसी कराया तो डॉक्टर ने बोला कि मतलब आपकी सर्जरी होगी थीमोथेरेपी होगी रेडियम होगी पहले फिर सर्जरी भी हो सकती है हम कुछ कह नहीं सकते तो फिर मेरे को इरादा है मैंने सर्जरी नहीं करानी फिर मुझे यहां पे पता चला हिमाचल में डॉक्टर का भी यहां पे इलाज है तिप्ती डॉक्टरों का The teaching of the Tibetan medicine is like this, you know, it's like, uh, it's not a question of just, you know, treating the disease. It's all about understanding the way of living. It's all about understanding the whole universe. Why the universe is formed and what power, what energy, the connectivity, the cause and effect, which has brought this universe into existence. truth of the suffering, the cause of the suffering, and the way to end the suffering. And finally, liberation from the suffering. Hmm? Oh, these are the teachings. Dharamsala, nested at the foot of the Himalayas in the far northern corner of India, is where our story begins. In 1959, His Holiness the Dalai Lama fled his home in Tibet and, after a long and dangerous journey, found refuge here and has resided here ever since. Now a new generation of Tibetan doctors, or menpas, climb these mountains in search of healing plants. My father tried. He uh, attempted to become a physician, but I think he couldn't do that. And he, you know, wanted me to become an amchi to carry on that lineage. So I joined Tibetan medicine, non-Tibetan medicine. 
Little has changed in this ancient practice in the centuries since it's begun. Plants and herbs that grow in high altitudes are said to be nourished by the sun and the moon in the same way that lunar and solar energies breathe life into our own bodies. As yin and yang in Chinese, or sibs and dag in Tibetan. Tibetan healers use these plants to treat illnesses such as diabetes, Alzheimer's, and cancer, and many other chronic diseases that disturb the harmony of the body. When I was small, I wanted to become a doctor, but I was not so interested in Western medicine, so it was like, oh, I don't want to spend seven years of my life to give people the chemical medicine, yeah? I was asking many people, where can I learn Tibetan medicine? And then they thought, uh, the Tibetans in Moscow, yeah? They thought that the best way to learn Tibetan medicine is to go to Mensikan in Dharamsala. It's the best place. Before, Tibetan medicine was not popular in Russia or in the West. But nowadays, there are so many Tibetan doctors who come to Russia. So in Moscow, there are so many people who take Tibetan medicine, and they are very happy. Yeah? It's Inga's first trek into the mountains in search of medical plants, the first of many trips in the coming years as she continues her study of plants and healing. They came yesterday in the evening. They are staying today, tonight, and tomorrow afternoon they will be back. During that time, you know, we have to collect it because we use it for our own purpose next day, so it's quite hard work, you know. As the grey clouds gather above, the crew takes shelter until the rain passes. It's the monsoon, and they could be waiting for hours. Finally, the rain stops and they continue their journey beyond the snow line. It will be another long day of travel before they return home. Meanwhile, 3,000 miles to the south, the city of Bangalore is just awakening, already warmed by a midsummer breeze. Coming from a long line of traditional menpes, Dr. Dorje studied at the Men Tsi Kang and is now the highly respected director of the Bangalore Clinic. Tibetan medicine is one of the most ancient cultural heritage of uh, Tibetan people. Bone tradition, bone school of thought believes that the Tibetan medicine, the origin of the Tibetan medicine date back, way back to, you know, the much before even the Buddha's could have period also. The Buddhist school of thought believes that Tibetan medicine came six centuries and seven centuries, you know, when the, the Buddhism finally came from India to Tibet. Compared to our predecessors, the ancient you know, physicians, the ancient masters, and whereas we, and compared to them, we are nothing. We are very, very, you know, a, a kind of miniature. It's like comparing, you know, a firefly with the sun. Our ancient masters are like a sun. 
they, their achievements, their kind of knowledge is something very, very vast and completely kind of fulfilled. Before starting their day in the clinic, the practitioners pray to Menla, the medicine Buddha, in order to focus all their healing energies on treating their patients. We have been praying every day in the morning before we start our practices and then doctors has to all get the in real initiations of the uh, medicinal Buddha. All this forms part of the spiritual awakening hmm? uh, of the doctor's kind of uh, the mind, the doctor's motivation. We used to pray about this for immeasurables, infinities, like, you know, immense kind of compassion you know, for the patients who are really suffering, who are really suffering. You know, compassion, deep-seated kind of compassion. Every other week, Dr. Dorje travels to the cities of South India, treating patients who depend on his visits for their care. Serving others, you know, that, that kind of service is something which is very su supreme, and we call it Jimba. Charity of giving life to somebody who really need it. And uh, with the help of your profession, you're able to help him to achieve that, bring some measure of hope and smile in their face, gives us a great kind of, uh, you know, inner strength also, satisfaction. We are now headed to Men Si Kang to witness the production of the traditional medicines and see how the Tibetan healing system is being taught to a new generation of student doctors who aspire to follow in the footsteps of the renowned Tibetan healers of the past. The plants collected from the mountains are brought down for processing. They are documented, cleaned, dried, detoxified, and then pulverized, each step following a strict set of regulations. Dr. Tenzin Taya, senior physician and teacher at Mensi Kang, is also a practicing monk. While Tibetan medicine is deeply rooted in the Buddhist teachings, one does not need to be a Buddhist to benefit from it. In past, the Tibetan doctors, most of they are monks, because in the village they don't have much school for study Tibetan medicine. And also the big monasteries, each of them have a medicine classes. So they teach to the monks. Then whenever the monk, they go back to their village, then they stay there and to do practice medicine. Dr. Taya, who fled Tibet in the 1970s, is fulfilling his lifelong dream of becoming a monk in Dharamsala. And at the same time, he is a leading Menjo Menpa, a doctor of medicine making, responsible for overseeing this large scale medicine production. Men Si Kang carries out regular evaluations of its medicines, striving to improve their efficiency in treating a variety of illnesses. At the same time, the core of Tibetan medicine, deeply rooted in the practices of compassion, has never changed. The blessing of each new batch of medicine is an essential part of the process. <laughs> In uh, Buddhist practice, 
whatever do something good for others that is the best practice so the medicine is uh, very very special because we produce medicine we when we are produce medicine we never say okay i produce this medicine i will kill this person or this will harm that, that person or something like that we always think okay this will keep some people relief give some people who have a suffering so if you have a disease if we the, this i met well meet good then they will get more benefit or this we always have a really good emotion there that's very important <laughs> The evolution of Tibetan medicine in the West is continually finding a balance between these traditional practices and the Western scientific guidelines that dictate how medicines are produced and documented. The once handmade pills and powders are now produced by efficient machines and can be distributed across the world. medicine we call it renaissance pill about 70 different ingredients so it's a very good for nervous system blood pressure especially also very good for cancer brain cancer all these things it's a very good medicine and also paralysis it's a very good medicine uh, and uh, the yellow you see this uh, very good uh, the yellow pills the yellow is, we call it tangjur. Tangjur is uh, about 150, 150 different ingredients. So this is a very good for all kinds of poison and also purify the blood, blood. And also very, very good for famous and very acute cancer pain. Mm. Acute ah, cancer, yes, yes. it's a very, very good. I'm a dental surgeon practicing private practice for the past 28 years. So I write a lot of allopathy medicines. There is always product information along with the medicine. That's what we are used to. It may have some trade name, but the, what is the chemical that's inside and what is the normal effect, what is the side effect, and drug interaction, you cannot give this medicine with that. All that information is readily available for in our system. Tibetan medicine, nothing is there. All the medicines look the same. They are either small brown ones or big brown ones, black ones. They all look the same. So <laughs> I even asked him once, what does this contain? At least tell me some names. He said, this one pill contains 35 herbs. Of that, he told some name. It was totally a bouncer. I don't remember anything. <laughs> and he said, this medicine is the active ingredient. The other things will uh, supplement its action. Oh, just powder it, powder put in your mouth and drink wild warm water. Water should be boiled and warm. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. So I was always scared what I'm swallowing and what is happening to that. Even though I tell my prayer and take, but inside that 5% doubt was there ki what's happening. That is why every year I make it a point to do my blood test. When I do the blood test, I check for my liver function as well as my kidney function. So uh, till now, all my liver function tests, all my renal function tests are coming normal. I have no issues. What is the relationship between science and Buddhism? Is there a way that these seemingly different worldviews can benefit each other in the future? The Dalai Lama has encouraged an ongoing dialogue between scientists and Buddhist thinkers, even going so far as to say that if scientists ever disprove a Buddhist belief, it is Buddhists who must learn to adapt. Buddhism and uh, science, it's a... Uh, in other words, it should be one. Good light surfaces. Okay, I found this. Just to please do analyze it. Don't think this is I said just to blindly you believe it. Yeah, we have a saying that gold. When we check the gold, we have to check cut it, we have to burn it. Then like that, there's many ways to check it's is it real gold or not. The same way you have to check uh, analyze the philosophy of Buddhism. Yeah. Yeah, so I think it's similar. <laughs> Very similar. Tibetan medicine's popularity is growing. 
In India alone, there are 54 branch clinics led by practitioners like Dr. Dorji. Tibetan doctors now travel to Europe and America to treat their growing number of patients. As the Tibetans themselves have spread out across the world, so has this ancient healing system that is now finding its way into every corner of the globe. See the sound? Hmm? Yeah. Hmm? You could feel the difference? Yes. You know, in the ethics of the Tibetan physician, we call it the whole chapter on the qualities and the integrity of being a physician, in which it was clearly mentioned that doctor has to be expert in every field. The Tibetan medicine being a more of a holistic kind of system, you know, you got to know that you just can't say that, well, I can treat your heart, but I will not treat your kidney. So it, it, everything is interrelated, you know. So therefore, when doctors have to be specialized in every field. Little yellowish, yeah. little oily, you know. Okay. Little oily also. Yeah. I mean, this, could see this small small particles floating, you know. Yes. Sir. These small, small particles floating are because of the indigestion. There are three main diagnostic approaches in Tibetan medicine. Observing, feeling, and interrogation. Pulse and urine analysis are the most important of these diagnostic methods. This bubble, which is, and, uh, you know, normally it disappears, you know. Okay. But in his case, it's not disappearing, it is staying, okay. you know. This could show a bit of a, you know, congestions. The urine's color, bubble formation, sedimentation, and even smell can be indications of illness. Tibetans believe that it's all connected with the food we eat. Indigestion, they believe, is one of the main causes of disease. Next is the interrogation. Are you happy? Stressed? Going through difficult times? They treat the patient as a whole. They don't, you know, there is the growth, I need to remove that. They'll not see only that. Overall, he says, generally you're doing well, that is more important. Your, once your feeling of that well-being is there, the growth will automatically go. I feel he, through our own mind and our uh, internal energies, he's trying to focus that and trying to make it go. It's like a bad child who cries, and then you pay attention, it cries more. You turn this way and that fellow keeps quiet. <laughs> I feel he's treating the tumors like that. Patients must be willing to change their habitual ways of living in order to be fully healed. It's easy to fall into despair and lose hope when faced with a diagnosis of cancer. Dr. Dorje, like the other Tibetan doctors, was not trained specifically in cancer treatment, but news traveled fast of his success and patients began to arrive at the clinic in search of treatment. We're spending billions of dollars. Then we find that, oh, yeah, this cancer cells act this way. This cancer cells act that way, you know? So it's a new findings. Hmm? But for us, for Tibetan doctors, it's not something which is new. You know, it's already mentioned in the Tibetan medical text, in, they say, Gyushi. It was clearly mentioned. That was almost like 800 years before. And clear description of the cancer itself. If not treated early, it becomes almost impossible to treat at advanced stages. Tendency of the disease to slowly suck up, to take up the nutrients of the body systems for its own growth, you know, and leaving the you know, body totally defenseless. It was also clearly mentioned in the medical text. It's early in the morning and the students are hard at work memorizing an ancient medical text, the Jushi. It is said to have first been taught by the Buddha himself, and since that time, it has been passed down through a continuous lineage of physicians. The Jushi is a comprehensive text that documents the teachings on the three humors that keep our bodies in balance, Lung, Tripa, and Bekin. 
long, it's a kind of energy in our body. It seems like outside uh, wind. It's whenever outside wind is moving, the trees are moving. The same way the energy, that energy in our body is moving. Then the tipa. Tipa means all kind of heat. And also in our body there's a liquid like a uh, water and the earth, the solid, all this uh, we call it pekin. So the three whom are always working in our body. But whenever these balance, they have always balance in the balanced state. When they are balanced, they work together like a friend, like a brothers. They work very, very good in our body. But whenever there's uh, unbalance, some are very too much, some are less, then they have a contradiction, like a fight each other. Because of this, we cause the disease. And also the same about cancer. Good morning. Pretty humor can be doing. Like some cancers are caused more by wind, then some are more caused by tipa, and also some, of course, caused by pekin. The, those cancer which is caused by wind. It means very un, what, unstable, sometimes swollen, bigger, sometimes shrinking, and also sometimes too much pain, and sometimes not too much pain like that way. And also the same chipa, because of chipa is a kind of heat, so whenever cancer caused by chipa heat, then maybe little danger. You have to be careful because this is very very quickly arrives, in fact, then of course the good goes to blood and this will transform to the whole body. All part of our body, there are three humors working, purifying each step. Impure blood, impure uh, liquid, impure solid, wherever this accumulate in our body part, then it becomes a cancer. So this is a very, very impo important concept of Tibetan medicine. Flashes of life in mind's silver screen, dancing flames to the tune of winds. A silent song, a silent prayer. The sky so vast, the path so long, a life to live with the smile you gave. Cancer is a disease which puts you down to the floor. It just pushes you. It doesn't warn you. It's an equalizer. It's a great equalizer. Uh, it can happen to anyone, be it rich or poor or 
it can be a hindu muslim across caste creed religion it's a equalizer it just humbles you and puts you pushes you down uh, physically mentally psychologically uh, even financially cancer it is not something which is very bad some not something which is totally unwanted but something which probably the almighty has given you a kind of you know the opportunity to transform yourself you know by undergoing this suffering the struggles normally if you have some illness if you take medicine you feel better but in case of cancer um you take chemo or radiation you become worse so that's irony because normally you take medicine it should cure you say for example uh, my mom was weighing around 75 kg uh, in 2009 it went down to around uh, 50 40 something like that so that was one of the major issues which was a major side effect of uh, the treatment and that's when we heard about uh, tibetan medicine her appetite became better she was able to eat better of course she has to selectively eat but uh, she started getting control of her body weight There are many other cancer patients like Eshwar's mother who come to the clinic from different walks of life. I'm uh, 56 years old now. I was diagnosed with cancer 3 and a half years ago, 2009 June, and uh, I went to the Tibetan uh, for the Tibetan treatment simultaneously with allopathic medicine. I had eight chemos. and uh, the usual side effects happened you lose all your hair your eyebrows my nails fell off and uh, my eyes would water you know sticky some sticky fluid would come from my eyes the whole time zero taste so all that was there but i really didn't suffer in terms of i went about my life pretty normally because i was on tibetan medicine so my energy levels really didn't fall to that extent I was lucky because most patients go there when they are terminal. So I was lucky I started it. I was a third stage cancer patient, breast cancer patient and I always was into alternative medicine. Because I'd had a few bad experiences with uh, allopathic. But I mean when you have cancer something so big, you know, the automatic and I guess for an emergency it's good. It has its effect. Allopathic with surgery it's more advanced when it comes to surgery etc so i i guess it's got its role to play in a in the whole field of medicine so i guess because and because of family pressure there was no avoiding allopathic medicine when i got cancer this this pain was reduced mm-hmm. but this is has not been after the after the radiation yeah, yeah. this pain yeah. it is quite common for patients to switch from western to tibetan medicine after surgery chemotherapy and radiation like dr revathi did so this shows where all they have removed the tumor plus a part of the small intestine also and uh, this was they did a presentation of mine that's how i got this photograph that way they removed around 7 and 1/2 kg 7.5 kg they removed i came to know about him from my father in law he was reading some magazine and he said this looks like very safe and all ayurvedic herbal thing why don't you try that we had no choice and i didn't want my lifestyle to be again and again disturbed like this one surgery means we are out out of action yeah, that is one thing it's still there a slight bit of a, you know the uh, uh, stress and strain in the heart mm. as the heart. i wanted to try this last 7 8 years i have been on tibetan medicines 
and uh, i am also monitoring my growth regularly and now the last 7 8 years the growth is there but it's very 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 slow another big thing is my quality of life my day to day activities nothing is disturbed oh, because the tumor being removed and getting 100% success on that leaving the patient totally incapacitated no you uh, handicapped kind of thing is not quality life no there may be a growth here and they say this fellow will spread here you cut this arm i have won over the tumor but what happened to the patient he is left with no arm so i mean we have to make a choice चलो हम फिर यहाँ आ गए दिल्ली से हम यहाँ आ गए धर्मशाला फिर हमने यहाँ पे ट्रीटमेंट शुरू कर लिया हाँ उन्होंने कहा हाँ उन्होंने कहा क्या क्यों विश्वास करते हैं इन दवाइयों पे और फिर भी ना आपने सर्जरी किया नहीं ना नहीं मैंने मतलब अब ट्रीटमेंट मेरे को दो टू मंथ होने वाले हैं पहले मेरे को पेन होता था पेन कम है पहले बहुत ज़्यादा आता था जख्म था ऊपर वो भी कम है मैं कॉन्फिडेंस से दवाई मेडिसिन खा रही हूँ अपनी कॉन्फिडेंस से When Tibetan doctors feel the patient's pulse, it is not only the heartbeat they're looking for. They attribute different characteristics of pulse to different organs of the body. Using three fingers from each hand, they feel the vibrations of each organ. Her breast cancer is a little big. In her pulse, there's a little infection. The pulse from this, this, the two finger is more strong. It means upper body have a more little infection. When you touch it, you feel it like a strong, but when you pressure more, it's not a pump in there. It means empty. So she have a kind of also coldness in the kidneys, lower body, wind and cold. I रोना शुरू कर दिया मम्मी ये क्या हो गया मम्मी ये क्या हो गया आपको आपने क्यों नहीं आज सर ध्यान दिया Those people who have a um, proper cancer in the breast, they have always have an emotion. Mainly for they have a more connect with heart. Whenever you have a very much emotion, they you you feel pain here. Of course, this is more strong, but both sides also. Then what it what it mean? Because all the energy the block is. एक्यूमिलेटिया we have a saying if the world is full of Uthan, you cannot cover the world, but you have to only cover your feet. That's enough. That's what it means is you should not go out just look for happiness. You have to go inside, then just change your mind, then you will get the happiness. Thank you.
वो अपनी बीमारी के बारे में देखो थोड़ा मन हल्का हो जाता है मन हल्का हो जाता है दिल मेरा जो ना वीक है डॉक्टर साहब भी कहते हैं आपका दिल बहुत वीक है आप कंट्रोल करो आप थोड़ा विल पावर स्ट्रॉन्ग बनाओ आप ठीक हो जाओगे अभी कॉन्फिडेंस Patients too have a responsibility. If they try to be a little more ignorant, if they depend heavily on the doctors alone, the whole attitude is uh, narrow-minded. People should understand that treatment approach, the health approach, is much more important than the treatment itself. Then, mind, mentally, try and be more positive, more truthful. Always think on better side of the life. My dad, days passed by and all, but then he never lost hope, okay? That was one of the biggest asset which he was already holding. He always, you know, wished for something good. Even though having such a such kind of a disease, he never let himself down. He kept on fighting back, you know, and instead he used to tell other people, you know, whatever you do, it must be the actions of your past which are actually getting answered now. Okay, so it's like you have to accept in life, like it's written, whatever is written, that has to be. You know, you have to go through those periods and all. He never had any fear of death. Okay, he always told me like, if God comes to me tomorrow and he picks me up, he takes me away and all, I'm ready to go. I, I realized the power of the mind fully when I got cancer. And uh, when I really like, came in touch with Tibetan medicine closely. So, and the, the doctors told me to meditate. That's when I really realized the power of the mind, how important it is. Good morning. Good. <laughs> so you're in the Buddha wood now. <laughs> I was a mastectomy case, and uh, the doctor, when I first, the first doctor I met, the first oncologist I met, told me I must have a mastectomy right within a week. I should have it right away. But I didn't, I resisted because I felt he was creating fear in me. I felt a doctor needs to take away my fear. <laughs> and we were yeah. from the chemo days. Yeah. Just no, no, much days. kind of younger, much fresh looking, Absolutely. much energetic, more, though. much more energetic. Even you know, could say. It's I'm more energetic you know. than you know uh, before I had cancer. Mm. The drama in cancer really comes from the treatment, from the allopathic treatment. You know, you see patients bald, no nails. Obviously, they look very, very tragic <laughs> and stuff. But I'm saying if you just saw cancer patients who hadn't done any chemo, it's not that tragic. You're getting what I'm saying? So a, the whole drama in cancer comes from chemo and makes for a very <laughs> good story also. <laughs> Since most cancer patients have first undergone Western treatments, Tibetan doctors have found it necessary to develop a thorough understanding of Western medicine in order to provide their patients with better treatment. Did they have the recent blood test done? Yeah, we did. I didn't get the yeah. report. Right. How much it was, remember? Hemoglobin, WBC. Hemoglobin was 11.6. 11.6, yes. not bad, huh? Not bad. Usually, you know, after every chemo, after every chemo radiations or something which he goes through, the normal blood cells and all count goes down to around 2,000, I guess. Around 2,000 to 3,000, the WBC count, right? Yeah. The WBC counts goes down to 2,000 to 3,000 and all, which is like, you know, it makes him much more weaker. Should be uh, yeah. minimum from 5,000 to 11,000, the count should be there. Yeah. But, uh, but he used to always have 2,500 or 3,000. 
So, yeah. which means the immunity is going down, the body immunity is going yeah. down. The toxin you are taking? The toxin? Thyroxin. The same. MG. Same. 50 mg. 50. You make it 25 mg. Don't increase it. 25 mg. Hmm? So, for the first time when he went through the chemotherapy and when he was taking along with this dementia Khang medicines and all, we got a surprising result. You know, usually what I said was like the WBC goes down to 2000. And when he started taking these medicines after the chemotherapy, the reading goes only down to 5000 to 6000, you know. So, we actually got a little bit faith in the medicines. That there is something which is, you know, actually provoking the WBC not to lose hope. After my surgery, I took something called tamoxifen, which a cancer patient has to take, every breast cancer patient takes for about five years. It's a must, every cancer patient takes. I took it for eight months and uh, then they told me one of the side effects of that medicine is uterine cancer. It's there in the pack insert, it's there online, you can find it. It sounds strange, but it's true. And my doctor said it happens one in a million cases. That's what they say, but uh, my uterine walls swelled up. So in, in the ultrasound, it showed up like that. And they told me it's probably induced by tamoxifen. But my doctor told me you do a biopsy to rule out cancer, to rule out uterine cancer, by which time I'd had enough. So I said, no, I'm not taking any more medicine. <laughs> I'm just staying with Tibetan medicine. And my doctor was alarmed, you know, he was completely, he said, how can you do this? How can you, I mean, you have to take it as a breast cancer patient. We married after my cancer. We were friends while I had cancer. We got married a short time ago. <laughs> Taking the chemo. <laughs> Look at the book I'm reading, you can heal your life. Unfortunately, what happened was the humor spread from she used to uh, have colon cancer that means uh, it was spreading in that area alone the stomach area alone but then it spread uh, to her hip region a pelvic region and it spread to the other region which became a bit uh, uncontrollable most important thing is to understand the nature of the cancer itself and, and how to treat it more holistically with a proper approach, the right approach. I believe there is no magic bullet in, in, in a curing cancer. It cannot be. You know, no matter how much money, dollars, billions of dollars you spend, there will be no, no magic bullet. My aunt was around, I think more than 70, when doctor diagnosed her as hepatic cancer, liver cancer. And I think from the beginning, she was taking Tibetan medicine, but that wasn't working and, and she died. And I, I got call from the children in the night, it was winter. And when I uh, came to their home, I saw her lying on the bed with that thread, you know, given by that Lama. And he, and she, you know, she was holding that thread in her left hand so tight. You know, I, I removed it. He woke up, he looked at me and he said, Keval, I want to sleep on your lap for some time. So I immediately took him. He slept on my lap for around 10, 15 minutes and then he woke up again. He saw my mom, he uh, hugged her, he, like, you know, he hugged her. And then finally he looked, looked up, he smiled, and then he's in a whoosh, he passed away.
she opened her eyes saw everyone and we were we just left you know all you know let out a happy note but after the 10 seconds the bp started coming down slowly the heart beats slowly came down and at 7:10 on october 29th monday she was officially no more the responsibility of the doctor also comes when the medicine alone doesn't work <laughs> so you have doctor have nothing to offer the patient but the patient is suffering and then you in doctor also takes the roles of the you know role of the spiritual kind of uh, teacher or the master so that the death becomes more peaceful his mind becomes more peaceful otherwise a lot of us a lot of people die with lot anger hatred kind of uh, uh, unfulfilled a lot of heaviness in their heart so they have palliative medicines they prepare you for the afterlife so it's really holistic in that sense you know taking care educating you about death how to handle it Foreign students like Inga are no longer a rarity. Menpers are beginning to emerge from all over the world. The world has opened up and slowly the practice of Tibetan medicine is spreading. Exchange programs like this one between Emory University in the United States and Mensi Kang help both sides develop a more comprehensive insight into each other's health systems. in the hope of one day leading to an even more holistic collaboration between western and tibetan medicine so just one more thing to think about here okay when you when i when i bend over like this these spinous processes move further apart so this moves further apart and this moves closer together we have so many remedies you can compound to thousands of remedy you can find many many thousands of remedy in the test but in future uh, the science scientist recognize natural medicine systems then we can really contribute a lot of things to the world if we can work very hard <laughs> if we we, do, we count uh, work very hard so then <laughs> it will be no use If I go to Russia, there are so many people who need help. I will go and I will practice. If I'm not sure that I can help people, I don't think that it's good yet just to make money or like that. So I need to be a very good student. <laughs> This is looking inside the orbit now. First of all, yellow speed for time. I will try my best to serve poor people in my own village or anywhere. My own family is from a poor background. There were um, many times, you know, we couldn't even afford to buy medicine for our family member. We need to understand patient. We need to know their background. You know, can they afford this medicine or not? here is the connection with buddhism with uh, medicine buddha here you should uh, think that you are like buddha you know, you have that compassion and you will help people तो डॉक्टर कहने का ठीक हो जाएगा पर वो ठीक नहीं हुआ वो बढ़ता गया 
बढ़ता गया वो वो फिर मेरा निप्पल जो था ना अंदर हो गया फिर मैंने सोचा ये क्या हो गया फिर मैं डॉक्टर पास गई थी सर्जरी करा के भी आए मैं गुरु के पास कल एक लेडीस आई हुई थी लंग्स पे चला गया डॉक्टर साहब दवाई दे दो दवाई दे दो मतलब तो इस एज में सर्जरी थोड़ा मुश्किल लगता है हम फिर सर्जरी नहीं कराना चाहते थे हमने कहा चलो यहाँ तिप्ती हर्बल दवाई जो है अच्छी हो गया हमने ट्रीटमेंट शुरू कर लिया फिर क्योंकि उससे बॉडी वीक हो जाती है बहुत वैसे ही वीक है इसलिए बस ये है कि डॉक्टर ने बोला है कि खुश रहना पता नहीं आंसू क्यों आ जाते हैं पता नहीं सब आंखों में आंसू क्यों आते हैं आंसू दिल पर आता है दिल क्यों बकता है ऐसे नहीं डॉक्टर ने मना किया ना ऐसे मत कर कोई नहीं ऐसे दिल हल्का हो जाता है फिर कोई नहीं खुशी के आंसू हैं भगवान के मेरे खुशी के आंसू है खुशी के आंसू हरि ओम हरि ओम हरि गोविंद बोलो गोविंद बोलो गोपाल बोल Sitting alone, the journey of life. Sizzling monsoon danced at me. Cool was the rain, fresh from above. I saw her. I started this like an experiment because I didn't know whether this will work for me, but I was quite positive. Uh, left with no other choice, I put full heart and soul whenever I take medicine. Not only the special pill, every time, whatever medicine I take, I think of my God. just it goes in my job is only to swallow going inside how it works where it works you take care sitting by the window side enjoying the grazing cows the enchanting clouds the drum beats of thunder she sang a silent song so living a normal life and having a quality life matters the most no matter you live one day or you live 10 months or something like that living the quality life is what the priority is okay so basically he started walking he started liking the food and all and then regularly he used to come here used to spend time with the doctors with the staff over here and he used all used to sit here in the seat he, he, this is this was a seat you know he always he used, used to, to always sit sit and you <laughs> had my the nature the whole nature he used yeah. to admire the nature people walking around he always used to see used to enjoy everything dancing to the tune of waves singing with the voice of birds leaving her tiny footprints she heard a silent song so i feel if i had gone to them earlier perhaps i wouldn't have got cancer i just feel i don't know okay maybe they will take me along 10 years but at least 9 out of those years my quality of life will be good reading the birds beaks seeing the gestures of people enjoying the beauty of silence she heard a silent song main apna jaap karti hu mujhe bahut acha lagta hai mere ko koi tension tension nahi mere dimag mein kam ho jati hai main mujhe confidence hai main theek ho jaungi confidence hai te dawai aapki lambi hai thodi koi baat nahi hum 2 saal kha lenge 1 saal kha lenge likhani yahi hai aage prabhu ki ichha hai It was the song of hope, the never-ending melody of belief. 
the choice that she made today. The bird stopped for a moment. The people looked at her. The wind turned around. That's when I saw her.